Hey there everyone, I've got a little thing to show. This is Sir Forscale, I re his name's actually Garrick or something like that. He's Reaper Mini, but he's used for scaling things a whole lot. I just thought I would show what I've got. This is a troll from Mini to Print, and I did not buy him. I printed him out on my 3D printer. And I think this is going to be a short video series. I don't know if it's going to be one video, two videos, or what. But I am going to paint him, and I, well, I guess that would be making it a video series. I'm not going to make it a weekly one. But I just wanted to show quickly you know, just how big a troll he is. And scoot it up a bit. Kind of get it aimed right for the camera. Down. So he's fairly big. But just wanted to quickly point out if you don't know, this is PLA plastic. It's kind of like filament from a. Uh, weed trimmer and this is a little piece of red that I had sitting on my desk and the reason I'm doing this is people did ask well how does it sand and it's like oh that's a good question and I don't really know so we'll find out together but just to quickly go over no problem with the print really I don't know if you can it's hard to see there we go I've moved to a laptop so we can actually see I can see what I'm recording I finally stole the computer back from my daughter and get it so it's a little bit more contrasted but you can see the little lines there and if you get in really close Come on, focus. Too far? There we go. You see some little spider web stuff in there. That That's normal. That says uh, the print head moves back and forth. It leaves little curls. It does have you know, overhang issues here and there. Um, you know, especially right down there, there's a little curly cue. Those are easily trimmed off, and you know, I'm not expecting, you know, uh, competition level figuring but you know just for the three hours and 22 minutes he printed you know it's not bad for a little tabletop I figure all told if you were to buy it from Shapeways or someplace like that or make your own even that you know it would mm. probably be about well, I would charge about six dollars myself. Yeah, it's less than that, but that's what I'd charge you. <laughs> Minor interruption. I zoned what I was going to say. But he's got a few flaws, but nothing really terrible. He did scare me while he was printing. These legs here started to curl upwards and the print head as it would come across it printed from the bottom to the top it would it curled up and it would hit with the print head every time and you know I've had a couple that have peeled off the tape and I think that's what happened is probably it hit I am concerned about this tail though you know, it disconnected itself basically. And so it's got this big jog right there. Let's see if it focus in on it. Let's move it over. Hey. Miso webcam. <laughs> okay, it's not gonna focus. But so that's an issue. That I'll definitely have to clean up, and I'm gonna tell the guy who gives these away, a mini to print, that that's something that's gonna need to be 
I don't know that it needs to be fixed, but it was an issue on my machine. So no big deal there. But anyway, we're going to sand him up. But he's not the first print that he that came off my machine. He's not even... He's in the first ten. First thing I printed was something for the daughter and front, something for the son, of course. But what I also printed were some dishwasher end caps. They go on the dishwasher like this and is that right? Yeah. And the handle is across here. Anyway, we've had one broken for years, so I decided to print one out. These are the failures, but keeping them because it's kind of fun to you know just do some testing on and don't have to worry about other things. Let me just run down what we did with this one first. First thing is I put some thinned Millie putt on here, trying to get that off. And it did get smooth, but there's something wrong with my Millie putt super fine white. Is it didn't really cure. I think it's just really, really old. So that may be a problem. I don't know if I'm willing to go get new stuff or not. So it just scrapes things off. And then on this side, I tried some just Liquitex ges gesso, 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 gesso. I don't. I'm not an artist. We'll call it guess. I'll say gesso from now on. Put that on there. And it really didn't cover up the lines like I'd hoped to, and this is just black liner applied on here. And. So, you know, the big question is, does it sand? And this one I hadn't sanded. But, you can see the little Dremel tool here. That's just a straight grinder. On this one, you can see, I eh, can't see that much. There's two little knobs here that fit into the handle. So I was trying to model them to the center hole where the screw goes through. But what I did there Here's, I use this one temporarily until I got a better model. And so I did grind those two off, and it you know, did a decent enough job. I was happy with that. So, good tool. And I may actually use that to kind of shape his tail. I think I could green stuff it and get something to looking, but eh, I'm lazy. So, you know, just grind straight down and just get it into more shape and or at least not with a jog like that maybe it's a broken tail and it's healed back you know who knows I did mention he's supposed to be a troll right anyway put him to the side so that was kind of well, that's not going to work very well so I went and got some more gesso thinking maybe it was just too thin so this is a, a thicker paste and while it worked it didn't again give me what I want and you know based on that I think it was brown liner paint from Reaper I don't think I'll have a problem with paint actually sticking to it especially if I line it first I figured it's kind of about the same as the bones figure so it probably would work and get that out of the way. So I will get up on online and see what we've got. And so let's just kind of get it in here. Here is what I've done. You can see all the lines on this side. And I kind of shield it from the light. It gets a little less washed out. Let me actually move the lights away. Oh yeah, better. I should get some reflectors or something. So, you can see them. I only did half. So, from here to here is completely untouched. Refocus. And on this side, I've done something different. And you can see, you know, there's that big flaw right there, and it's just a layer that has shifted one direction 
and so it's got a, a groove in there and you can kind of hear it right there but not the same on that side so definitely it's working here and I'll show you in a second and then I went by with a I don't have it sitting here also purchased from Hobby Lobby it's just a coarse grit sanding file spongy thing and so I sanded the two edges there and sands perfectly fine it's pr they do recommend you don't do a high-speed sander so I, I haven't done that yet but I figure if you're careful enough you can get it done it's just it's not a recommended practice but I'll even use this to stick so this over here my little Google search turned up on a jewelry website and they said to use a cloth sander well the closest thing I've got here is a just a felt buffing wheel and, you know it's soft and pliable and it almost might as well be sandpaper you know it did that little smooth side over here and just instantly almost you could kind of see it melting and you know covering over the layers of course it's still got that one layer that I just don't like very much but that one I might be able to fill in with putty or it's so small enough now that it might not even show up so there's one one thought though I had is if I make everything just a little bit bigger on every, every side then when you sand it down it's the perfect shape but that also means you have to sand everything so something like this just on the handle I'm not gonna bother and then over here it's really smooth and remember I didn't do anything to this side so it's just straight out of the printer and black lined and then I decided to sand some more and so either sanding or doing that buffing wheel gets about the same so I'm not that concerned about it I did try whatever the world this is a little poofy sponge thing and it didn't seem to do really anything so you know maybe it buffed it a little bit but I couldn't tell I couldn't even get the plastic to melt when I pressed hard so I don't think that's any use now my dilemma becomes is how to buff something like this with something like that and I'm not certain that it's even possible I'm not certain I even want to try you know, maybe just getting in here and trying to get some of the bigger pieces cut out and I may just skip that entirely and just call this one a uh, practice piece and its only purpose is for fun and to be a quick tabletop yeah maybe he's supposed to be a troll maybe I make him a, a rock troll or something but uh, I might get some of the more larger things of course you can also just kind of scrape it with your fingernail too so anyway this will be kind of what it is I don't know that I will show me cleaning him up very much because there's not much of a point in showing that because well maybe there is and uh, anyway we'll see how we go but wanted to give a quick little introduction and this will be one of those things I just pick up from now and then and so it's not going to be a weekly series I'm still looking for that but wanted to show and got asked on the forums to do a little experimenter stuff 
So I have. You know what? I might go ahead and buff those bases. Let's go ahead and do that. Grab my stylus. <laughs> I do recommend you wear a mask for this and whatnot. So let's just do the bass and probably be loud. So I may, I'm going to mute it while I do this, and you can just hum along or something. Hopefully, I'll remember to unmute it. Okay, I'm unmuted. And see if I can get it to focus on it. You can see some stuff. Not that spectacular, it seems, but if we go here, you can see it's got lines there that do not exist on here anymore. So it does it, and that was very rough of what I did. But you just take the sanding sponge, or whatever you're using, and just a quick thing like that, and it's much smoother. So anyway, that's what I'll be doing, and I'll show you the results next episode.